I'm going to take a look at proportional relationships and what that means when you look at them uh, when they're graphed for you. Uh, basically, uh, proportional relationship, when you look at it on a graph, it's going to create a straight line. It's either going to go up to the right or it's going to go down to the right. Um, when we take a look at it right here, if I put some dots that it looks like we could connect with a straight line, we would say it's still a proportional relationship even though it's not a straight line. Um, but because basically the data is trending in, in the form of a straight line, that would count. But if I had some dots that were kind of spread out all over the place and we couldn't just draw a straight line to connect all the dots, we would say that is not proportional. Okay. So um, at the same time, though, while we know that would be a proportional relationship because it's making a straight line, if it's curved like this, Sorry, that doesn't fit the bill. It needs to be a straight line. And it doesn't always have to be going up to the right. It can also be going down to the right. Like that. Same thing with the, the data points. You know, if it's trending and we could connect all the points with one line, we would say it's proportional. Okay? Now, as far as what is a proportional relationship, basically it's this. Um, when both of the the values, the x values and the y values, they're moving together. Um, there's a constant rate of change there. So if um, we had a point of data right here, and that means that we were sitting on the x axis right here and we're sitting at the y axis right there, if the x axis data moved over a little bit more, then it's going to react in a very predictable manner and we could tell where it's going to hit on the y axis. And it also <clears throat> always creates a straight line with that type of movement. Okay, now if um, if it's a straight line, this proportional relationship, we've done that. Let's take a look at the examples though where we actually start putting in um, a few other things to help us make sense of it. Um, if we went on a cruise ship and there was uh, two foot waves hitting the side of the ship, let's just say that there were 10 people that were sick, okay? And then let's say the waves get a little bit bigger. Let's say that uh, basically it went up to six um, foot waves. Suddenly you've got 30 people sick. And then if we went up to 10 foot waves, we would have 50 people sick. This is an example of <clears throat> a relationship between the X values and the Y values. We'd say that these X values are causing a change in the y values. The higher the waves, the more people that get sick. And if we were to graph them, it would look something like this. As the x values kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, it would cause a straight line to be formed, and it would be going up to the right. And it's a very special relationship when these x values are getting bigger and bigger. See how that went from 2 to 6 to 10? Well, at the same time, the y values were getting bigger also. And when both of them get bigger, we just call it a direct positive relationship. This direct is talking about how um, the height of the waves were affecting the number of people who were sick. There's also another relationship that we need to look at. And by the way, when you look at a, a graph, if you need to see if it's a positive relationship, if, if that line is going up to the right, you could say it's positive. Or you can take a look at the graph and they're both getting bigger. When, when we take a look at another situation, we would be uh, looking at a negative relationship, and, and that's basically this. Let's just say there was a pizza place that decided they were not going to sell the pizza. They were just going to give it away. If you were hungry, you'd say, yeah, give me however many slices of pizza that you want. Let's say if they didn't charge anything, um, they would actually be selling somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 pieces. Let's just make it a nice round number. So when it's zero on the x-axis, they were giving away a thousand pieces of pizza. Now, if the cost goes up, and let's just say that um, it was two dollars, and let's just say it was two dollars for a slice of pizza, uh, then suddenly that price would go down. Maybe they're only selling five hundred pieces. Okay, so there's a thousand. Here's zero. Here's five hundred right about here and that would hit here, 
And so let's just go ahead and say this is $2, okay? And then let's just go ahead and use this one right here. Let's just say this is $4, because it just looks like it fits there. So if the cost goes to $4 a slice of pizza, they're not going to be able to get rid of any pieces of pizza. And so this relationship is saying that as the x values keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the y values would drop down and it causes this negative relationship. If you looked at just the table, um, as the x values keep getting larger and larger, this time the y values are getting smaller and smaller. And that's just called a direct negative relationship. And if you're wanting to look at uh, just the graph of itself, if you see it going down in a straight line, that would be a direct negative relationship.